I'd like to welcome each one of you to our devotional study today. I invite you to take your Bible, come with me if you would, to Luke chapter 9. Luke chapter 9, we are going to begin at verse 27. And uh, the next few verses is all about the glory of Christ as we look at the transfiguration of the Lord Jesus Christ. We'll probably be a couple of days looking at this transfiguration. But as you're turning to Luke 9, 27, let me remind you that our lives are all about bringing glory to the Lord Jesus Christ. Uh, you know, bringing glory to God. So often we mistakenly make life about us. And friends, life is not about us. Life is not about what we want. Life is about letting your light so shine before men that they may see your good works and glorify your Father, which is in heaven. When people see you and the things that you do, they ought to understand it's not you. It is the God within you that works to will and to do of his good pleasure. Luke chapter 9, I want to read verses 27 through 36. Jesus says, But I tell you of the truth, there be some standing here which shall not taste of death till they see the kingdom of God. And it shall come to pass, and it came to pass, rather, about and eight days after these sayings, he took Peter and John and James and went up into a mountain to pray. And as he prayed, the fashion of his countenance was altered, and his raiment was white and glistening. And behold, there talked with him two men, which were Moses and Elias, who appeared in glory and spake of his decease, which he should accomplish at Jerusalem. But Peter and they that were with him were heavy with sleep. And when they were awake, they saw his glory and the two men that stood with him. And it came to pass, as they departed from him, Peter said unto Jesus, Master, it is good for us to be here. Let us make three tabernacles, one for thee and one for Moses and one for Elias, not knowing what he said. While he had thus spake, there came a cloud and overshadowed them, and they appeared, they appeared as they entered into the cloud. And there came a voice out of the cloud, saying, This is my beloved Son, hear him. And when the voice was passed, Jesus was found alone. And they kept it close, and told no man in those days any of those things which they had seen. So as we come into this today, we are looking at the transfiguration of the Lord Jesus Christ. And as we do so, I encourage you to read uh, the verses in the other Gospels that have to deal with the transfiguration of the Lord Jesus Christ as well. You not only find it here in Luke 9, verses 27 through 36, but you will also find it in Matthew chapter 17, verses 1 through 9. Mark also records it for us in Mark chapter 9, verses 1 through 10. And as we come into these verses, we see that Christ was transfigured before them. Now, that phrase is not used here, but if you go back to Matthew chapter 17, you'll find this in verse 2. It says, And was transfigured before them, and his face did shine as the sun, and his raiment was white as the light. That word transfigured literally means a change of form or appearance. And as they looked at this, indeed it was a miraculous thing that was taking place. This, the appearance of his external form being changed. And Simon refers to this actually in 2 Peter chapter 1 in verse 16. And we'll look at that verse greater tomorrow. But let me just comment and, and read it briefly today. 2 Peter 1.16 it says, we've not followed cunningly devised fables, which were made known when, when we made known unto you the coming and power of the Lord Jesus Christ, but we were eyewitnesses of his majesty. He says, listen, I'm telling you about the great splendor of God, his excellent majesty that we saw face to face. Now, as we look at this, we see in verses 27 and 28 that the transfiguration literally fulfilled Christ's prediction. Notice in verse 27, he says, But I tell you of a truth, 
And by the way, that's always the case with the Lord Jesus Christ. He is the way, the truth, and the life. The word of God is the word of truth. And when Jesus speaks, friends, when God speaks, it is always the truth. When the devil speaks, it's always a lie. But when God speaks, it's always the truth. And he says here, I tell you of a truth. There be some standing here which shall not taste of death till they see the kingdom of God. Now some, when they don't understand what's going on in this passage, may get critical of this verse and say, Jesus said that some would not die until they saw the kingdom of God, but yet they all died. Well, friends, I want you to understand that this transfiguration that happens in these verses literally fulfills Christ's prediction that some of those that were standing there would not die until after they had saw the kingdom of God. There's wonderful things that are pictured for us in this transfiguration. And we will see them as we journey through this today and tomorrow. First of all, notice Peter, James, and John were especially favored. Out of all the twelve disciples, the twelve apostles, they were the only three that got to see this. But notice... Even at that, the Bible tells us in Luke 9, 28, it says, It came to pass after eight days after these things. He took with, uh, Peter and James and John going up into a mountain to pray. And, and friends, it, it's wonderful to study the, pray, the prayers of the Lord Jesus Christ and the time that he spent in prayer. And let me remind you, if prayer was a priority in the life of the Lord Jesus Christ, how much more does it need to be a priority in our lives as the people of God. But he went up into a mountain to pray. Verse 29. And as he prayed. The fashion of his countenance. Was altered. And his raiment was white. And glistening. What an opportunity. What an experience. This was. For Peter and James and John. They had never experienced anything like this in their life. Nor would they experience anything like this again. This was a once in a lifetime opportunity. That God allowed them to be a part of. And the Bible says in verse 30. And behold there talked with him two men. Which were Moses and Elias. Now we don't have a lot of time to go into this. But let me just mention a couple of things about these guys today. First of all. Moses had been buried by the hand of God. Remember back in Deuteronomy chapter 34? We find this out. Moses had been buried by the hand of God. Deuteronomy 34 verses 5 and 6. So Moses, I like this, the servant of the Lord died there in the land of Moab according to the word of the Lord. And he buried him in a valley in the land of Moab over against Beth Poor, but no man knoweth of his sepulcher unto this day. So Moses was buried after he died by the hand of God. Elijah, on the other hand, was taken up in a whirlwind after his death. In 2 Kings chapter 2, you can see that there. 2 Kings chapter 2 and in verse 11. It says, And it came to pass as they went on and talked. That behold, there appeared a chariot of fire and horses of fire and parted them asunder. And Elijah went up by a whirlwind into heaven. So as we think about the death experience of Moses and Elijah, now we see them back here and they are with the Lord Jesus Christ on the Mount of Transfiguration. And as we look at this whole thing, we realize that very simply, Moses represents the law and Elias represents the prophets. So up there with Jesus, you have the law and the prophets, the, the, the very Old Testament scriptures that told us of the Lord Jesus Christ. And the Bible says that Jesus appeared in glory and that he spake of his decease, which he should accomplish at Jerusalem. So there that day on the Mount of Transfiguration, he talks about all that the law and the prophets had taught. How that the Lord Jesus Christ was going to come as a sinless, spotless Lamb of God. And that he would be rejected by men. And that he would go to the cross of Calvary. And all of these things are being talked about that day on the Mount of Transfiguration. As the law and the prophets are about to be fulfilled. Oh friends, what wonderful 
testament to us of the fact that the word of God is sure and it's verified for us in the midst of this most wonderful experience that Peter and James and John had. And we'll continue to look at this experience on the Mount of Transfiguration when we come back together tomorrow for our devotional. Have a great day. Thank <laughs> you.